I'm not a person that's going to let something progress. The second you do something, I'm going to say, hey, listen, I'm not with that. That's not going to work for me. Right. Whatever it is. Now, if I'm doing it to you. Oh, but you did it, too. It's like, first of all, we're not talking about me right now. now we're talking you, about you. No, no, no. We're Wait, can I give you an example saying, of what that yeah, sounds like? It. Is like yeah. it wasn't a problem for you when I came home late, but it's a problem for me when you come home late. And that just makes no sense. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna have a problem with her coming home at four o'clock in the morning, then you can't come home at four o'clock in the morning. That's not the truth though, because the thing is, if what bothers me does not may not be what bothers you. So if I look, well, if you come home at four, if I come but it's gonna bother no. you to the point to say don't do it, then if you I, cannot do it. And and if we're talking about coming home at four o'clock in the morning, which I feel like is disrespectful, regardless, right? I'm not going to I'm not going to go on that but if we talk about other things right smaller things like um yeah, we, i need an example let's say okay let's say like this right let's say um i'm trying to figure out what sign i'm on i need an example right i don't even know i don't even have an example but i'm trying to make I one think up. her example was decent no, but i feel like yeah. even her but he even her example is not decent because what happens is once you allow something you enabled it and you set the expectation that it is okay for you that does not mean that same expectation is okay for an entirely different human being. So if I don't like something, you can say, all right, cool. Listen, I want to let you know I didn't speak about it. I also don't like it as well. We handled the situation different. But when you say, oh, but you did it, it's like timeout. It was an issue two weeks ago, 14 days passed, and you never said anything. Do not bring up I need those it. Wait, times. hold on. Imagine telling your home girls, imagine telling your home girls, I gotta be home because my man don't like when I stay out too late. Oh, but I get home. No, where no, he don't, at? Don't even say but where he at. Girls. Don't even say like say like somebody closer than no, that. No, I'm like, just no, I'm just saying like imagine you saying it out loud because it sounds crazy when you say it out loud, right? And that's just my point. You're right. My yeah. man don't like when I come home late, so y'all I gotta go back home. But my man not home, he out late. But why he out late? Oh yeah, cause he could do that. I just can't. No, first of all, nobody said what they can and can't do. You allowed it when you said nothing. But Rico, I think I think the point that Amanda is trying to make, like, if it's such an issue, period, why would you be engaging in the same activity? If it's if it's such an issue, right? Why would you even set yourself up to engage in such activity to where it, there could even be a double standard? Because I, I think the double standard is, is 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 really what the problem is. It's like you can't come to me and say, even though I didn't bring it up, because may, maybe I'm just trying to like keep the peace. But that's maybe I don't want to fight every mm. every battle. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be a fight or a battle. Well, but see, the thing is that for 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 I'm, I'm be honest, a lot of people don't know how to like take criticism or they don't know how to like um like hear someone saying, hey, I didn't like that without there being any defensiveness or whatever. So, and I, and I can see a lot of people feeling like that, you know? So I, it's, it's just crazy to me that you could be so against something, but still engage in that something that you're so against yourself. I think that's what Amanda is saying. But the issue is that you are not a good partner if you can't communicate. And if you can allow something to happen and not communicate how you felt and let time pass, whether it be one week or three months, and then the same situation happens. And then now you're bringing up a situation from months ago. But now you a nag. No, but no, no. If you said, hey, listen, what works for me was is what works for me. What I find offensive, or what I find disrespectful is what I find offensive and disrespectful. If we're going to use, and, and I can't think of a smaller situation. Oh, I can. Like a smaller situation? Mm -hmm. Put that up. <laughs> uh, like put the toilet paper. If the, the toilet paper just ran out, put the new toilet paper on there. I think, no, that's I, very small. No, it's very small, and I think that I that was gonna go with dishes. I know. I figured you were, I, cause y'all think I just, you know. Now, nah, and you know, it's, and I can't even think about it because this happened to me in my relationship last year, but it was over something small, and I was like, "What? Like you're talking about something that was from like six months ago like that this? you never, huh? Like this? <laughs> you're talking about something from six months ago that I didn't even remember I did. One, okay. two, you let it, you let it go by for X amount of time. And three, you never set the expectation or the boundary. If you don't set the boundary and then you allow, and then somebody does something and now they set their boundaries, you can't get upset because they're setting their boundaries and you didn't set yours. So for me, it's like, yo, if we're going to be in a relationship, 
I'm going to do things that you don't like, especially if it's early on and we're still getting to know each other. But, the, but, the, but that, that ain't your relationship. Let's like, that's not your relationship. It's not early on. So like speak from like really where you are. Same with well, you. Like, yeah. you know. I see. I kind of see. I see both sides. No, I definitely understand yeah. the point that he's making. I think like I get it. The main thing that the baseline, as you would say, thing is just respect, though. Like if you don't like it, what makes you think I'm going to like it? But on his side. I'm seeing it as why are you keeping sc- yeah. why are you keeping score from six I agree. months ago? Yeah, and I didn't even know. Two weeks. I didn't know. Yeah. Two, week, yeah. two weeks ago. I said, no, it's no. My should be like he made he made his shit, situation was like, months. I was like, mine what? was two weeks. <laughs> you know, because my thing is, and I'm just speaking from my but own I agree real with life, you. right? It's like what doesn't work for what doesn't work for me could be entirely different from what doesn't work for you. Agree, you. right? I've had girlfriends who had. We've well, I don't say we've all, but a lot of us have had previous relationships prior to our current relationships in this world, in this on this couch, right? So the way that those relationships dynam- d- dynamics were for me in my life were all different. There were things that were not allowed because they offended that they offended one that would not be offensive to another. So when I'm doing things, I'm not doing things in a way or in the means of disrespecting you intentionally. So when it's not brought to the surface, like, hey, this is something I find offensive or this is something I don't want to live with. This is something that is a deal breaker for me. These are my boundaries. Now that clear communication allows me to never have to do that again. Now, if you wait for me to do it and my biggest pet peeve and and, uh, my biggest ick characteristic in a person is spite. People who are spiteful, I can't live with, I can't trust, I can't work with. Because if I offend you by accident, right, or like unintentionally, and you feel offended to a point where you are going to act on something like that, I can't trust you. Because if I'm doing something and you do it to me and I'm like, why would you do that? And you tell me because I did it mad long ago. I'm like, you're just, you know, you're causing problems within our relationship and within my life. I think, I don't mean to cut you off, but I no, think good, yeah. the, best, the best way to really go about it, which is super hard to do, especially in the heat of the moment, is figure out what works for us because you're saying you and they're saying them. So like in a healthy relationship and like I, or ideally like really trying to build or keep what you have going, you have to say what really works for us. And I think the bottom line of that was go- is gonna be respect because if it works for us, then we're not gonna even have these problems because you're gonna respect the fact that I didn't go out, I didn't stay out till four. So I expect you to not stay out till four or if you plan on staying out the floor, just communicate to me ahead of time. So I think that's the thing, like just just going at it from a healthy, healthy aspect and not thinking of singular I and just think about us. But that the thing that happens is, and I agree with you entirely, but the issue which isn't, is, isn't, which isn't easy to fucking it, do. No, it's it's easy if you talk about it from a con, from from a situation at that moment. It's not easy to try to foresee it. Right. Or, or you know, try to predict what will happen. I can't tell you a bunch of rules and regulations before we, you know, start dating each other seriously. But let's say if something happens and I'm doing something that you find disrespectful or offensive, you don't just sweep it under the rug. You don't just say, oh, all right, that's cool. Don't worry. No big deal. And 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 do it to that person and think that it's going to be no big deal for them. If it's really an issue for you. You have to say, hey, listen, I felt, it might not even be a deal breaker, but this is just how I felt when you did this, right? And then it puts that in that man's brain or that woman's brain, whomever's brain, that, yo, I'm causing this feeling in this person when I do these actions. But when you bring it up again, it's like, well, hold on, because I wasn't I wasn't doing it to, to, you know what I'm saying, to hurt your feelings. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even think it was going to hurt your feelings until you said it. Now weeks later or months, whatever it may be. So my response to that is literally I, I 1000% agree. And I even think about like coming, coming at it from a we perspective. That's literally the, probably the best solution, but the solution yeah, for me and the hardest solution. Yes. But I, I think the the issue is a lot of times in a relationship, you literally have to pick your battle. Like you don't want to bring up something every single time like 
you don't agree with or you don't like or you feel disrespect. Well, the yeah, uh, disrespect you yeah, bring it in. Yeah. But like all these other things, you know, like um that's the scorekeeping. I don't mean to cut you off, but that like, that's the scorekeeping. And I think and if you don't if you don't pick your battles wisely, then you'll always have those cards in your pocket something. waiting to like pull this out at right. the very moment. So you're really not you're really not gonna grow together because you're 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 growing resentment and you're waiting for him to mess up so you can be like, Oh, remember this, remember that, remember that. So you're just pulling mm -hmm. the relationship back further and further instead of just, Oh, I hate being fucking mature, but you gotta like let shit go and it sucks. Yeah, having to let shit go because what if your partner's really well? Then that's but like you, mean. but that's the point of picking and choosing. So it's just like if it's something really small that you feel like you can let go, you can let that go until you feel like it is a constant problem. So if it happens again, then I feel like all right, it's okay to bring it up because it happened twice now, and nigga, I don't like that. So mm -hmm. like, <laughs> you know, fix it. So, and I don't really think that's like keeping it in the back pocket for an argument later. It's kind of just like, okay, it was like, this is small inconvenience the first time. So I don't want to make an argument out of every single thing. And and I feel like women do that a lot because we don't want to be a nag. Well, I'll end up being a nag. It's like, my thing is, and, yes. and I say that in a respectful way is like, we're going to feel nagged whether you do it or whether you don't. Yes. So just... So just talk our shit anyway. Not talk your shit, but like learn how to communicate with the man. Exactly. Communicate like, it right then and there so I can correct my shit instead of like me waking up. And in up, a way that... But that, but that is problematic. Like, so it's like every time I do something... Exactly. Then y'all going to feel like, damn, she... that This girl just don't like me. She got a problem with every... I think there's a way of going about it. Thank you, Ron. That's what I'm saying. Because if yeah. you if you make it to like, I do something and you figure out a way... I'm not saying you gotta sugarcoat it, but a way that it don't have to be an argument, and you could just be like, "Hey, I just really didn't like that," you know. I'm be like, "Okay, cool. She's she, cool. I respect." I'm not saying that. it has not to be an argument, only, but a lot of people are not like in a in a, in an emotionally regulated place, <laughs> right? So what you saying it for, okay. like? But that first mean, of all, but that doesn't mean it's I thought that was a it's phone. It's, it's frustrating. I didn't even know that was coming from. Like he house. literally said that, knowing that somebody, me, it's was gonna be like. She what? Is. Okay, I don't know what people. Prince Allen has, people. but <laughs> people, people. Well, I think we don't call it nagging though. We, Thank we, you. Just like y'all gossiping, y'all don't call it gossiping. Y'all be the biggest but gossipers, but y'all don't call it gossiping. I think sharing information and gossiping is different. No sir, it's way different. It's no, like sir. yo, I think we have a better filter of saying, listen, I'm gonna say something about like, this I right now. Tell you this, but and I know it's gonna be. Nah, I don't do that. <laughs> you understand? Or or as opposed to us just letting it go. Like that's what I do. I look at some shit and be like, "Yo, I'm I'm mad about this right now, but I bet you if I walk away, if I eat, if I go to the gym, I can process all this and I can be like, "Yo, it's not really a big deal." As opposed to like them just coming out and saying it and now it being a whole big thing that really isn't really a big deal at all. Yeah, but the thing is, and that's why you have to like let some things slide. But the th and the thing is though, I see I'm not that type of person like I can't wear extra weight. So if there's something that's uh, an issue for me that's happening in my relationship, I've learned, I would say in the last six years, how to communi communicate it in a way where it's super clear. And and it's not it's not threatening, it's not attacking, it's not poking a bear, it's not pointing a finger. It's like, hey, listen, I just wanted to let you know such and such has happened and this is how I feel about it. And, you know, these these things, you know, can cause me, these feelings can cause me to feel this, to, to act this type of way. I don't want to act that type of way. And I don't want to feel that type of way. So let's either find a, a workaround or let's not do it at all. Whatever that you may be. You better watch how you talk to me. Cause, <laughs> right. <laughs> but like, that's what it is. Do they always receive your clarity as clarity? So, and that's, that's, a, that's the, so that's the thing. My, and, and I hate to say it, but my previous relationship was the best communicated relationship. Because we received and we understood each other and we didn't have to challenge each other. What doesn't like, and that was one thing I said, I was like, listen, we don't have to agree with the way what I do makes you feel. And I don't have to agree with what you do, with how it makes me feel, so but I have understand. to understand that it's real. Understanding, yeah. Right? I don't care to know, like, I mean, I don't care that what I feel about this is not that big of a deal to you. It is a big of a deal to me. Just respect it and vice versa. And we never had issues, like argumentative issues. If there was like, hey, listen, this is an issue for me. I don't like this. All right, cool. It stopped, and that was it. Now, in other relationships, that's not the case, right? Because sometimes things go not spoken or unspoken, and then it builds up. 
right? I did six different things that I didn't know you can tolerate, but by the sixth one, you done went off. And now it's an argument because these things weren't communicated prior. You know what? And this is actually what I said earlier. I think that I won't say all at all, but or I, I would say a lot of women really try to avoid addressing every little thing that happens because we ultimately are trying to avoid being a nag. Yeah. Like, I I mean, you can speak for whatever or even, like, speak for your experience, like, seeing your mom and, you know, your sisters or whatever with your dad. But, like, even myself, I let things go. I be like, mm. and I do this to, like, calm me down. <laughs> no, no, no. I literally, like, tap in the middle of my head <laughs> to, like, calm me down. I be like, mm. It's not that important. Don't worry. Walk away. You know, but then there are other things where I'm like, I don't know who you thought you was messing with. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so something has to be said. But I think because that um, persona of being a nag, we don't want that associated with us. So I, 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 in my opinion, I think that women try to to avoid bringing up every single thing, even if, even if all those things really annoy us and really get on our nerves and really create work for us and really is a problem for us. We just be like, you know what? But I with think that, that being said, uh, it, with that, I'm sorry, with that being said, if you think about everything that you, you, you're storing away and you're only oh saying one God. thing, do you really like this person? That's what I'm trying to say. It's not a what? relationship that I feel like should be had. I, I do think you have to pick your battles. I'm not disagreeing. But when we're talking about, I don't know what the number is or the threshold is, but enough to make you explode, this is a person that you're forcing yourself to be with. I don't think you're forcing yourself. I think the force. I think, because you have to think about, there are different challenges that come with different parts of a relationship. So when you're just dating, you got your own house, he got his own house, you got your own house. There are yeah. certain things that don't even exist as far as conflict or as far as like, oh, well, I ain't like that, I ain't like that. But once you start sharing a space, once you start sharing bills, once you start sharing obligations to children, animals, parents, uh, uh, loans, all of that, things change mm. because the way you look at those things are very different. So I think when you are just dating, circumstances are different. But then when you join, like, like really join a life with somebody, you, ag again... I think women are very much concerned with not being a nag and picking the most uh, important of the things that get on our nerves versus like bringing up every single thing. Because I'm gonna be honest, I think that y'all, I think that men equally have stuff that get on y'all's nerves. Right. Equally have. But we, we just handle it differently, you mean? You crazy. No, I think y'all, I think men have things that y'all want to say, but y'all just don't want to come off as bitches. Wrong. You know, you, you, you just, or assholes. No, you just want to, you be like, whatever. I'm not even finna, you know. Or we can't say it. Why, why can't you? Because we get, our repercussions, repercussions, I'm gonna make sure I'm saying it right. Webster. The repercussions. Repercussion? <laughs> that boy said repercuss, <laughs> repercustations. <laughs> Crustacean, <laughs> you goddamn crab. <laughs> the repercussions are way different for like when we, or nags, yeah. Not nags, but when we like how y'all want to call a name, y'all call y'all eads quickly say, "This motherfucker." Da, 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 da. Let us be like this bitch here to your face. Now it's it's a whole different ball game. We can't we can't. Your mama. I didn't even call you a bitch. You said play with my mama. <laughs> I'm just saying, like <laughs> play with your saying. mama, not me. That's what I'm saying. But you can call us all types of this, that, and the I third. don't. That I doesn't don't. happen to me. I, I don't. I, I don't play that call. Yeah, I don't. I don't play those games. Yeah. yeah. You call me out of my name, this is this has gotten so far to a next level where I don't think it's about a, but the, the problem is, is that in my opinion, this is just my opinion, fighting a battle is the issue. Picking your battle and fighting a battle is entirely different because I can pick a battle, I can address this and I can address it level-headed, I can address it calm and I can address it in a way where I need to, well, if I'm in a relationship with you, I would hope I know how to communicate with you for you to be able to receive the issue that is, you know, that has surfaced. Now, when I'm fighting battles, I don't care if you pick one or you pick a hundred. You're still fucking fighting, and I don't want to fight, right? So, and I think at some point, and I can't speak for women, but for men, if I've been with you for 15 years and you fought, 
you know, 30 battles. It's only mm-hmm. two battles a year. That's light. <laughs> but I fought those battles. Really, there was 15, there was there was uh, 30 wars. They weren't even battles. It was wars. We was beefing. I really didn't like you while we were having this, uh, you know, this, this um, problem in our relationship. And they weren't small. So when you learn how to actually communicate with your partner and make it a battle or less, and instead of fighting it, you just address it, then I feel like it's different. You know what I mean? And and I can't speak I I only had four relationships, serious relationship that lasted over two years in my my life. Right? There's only been one that had a hundred percent clear communication. And I blame myself because I didn't fight the battle or I didn't pick the battles and address the battles early in my relationship. It took me three months of, hey, listen, basically we we kind of came up with a rule book like subconsciously of what our partner doesn't like and does like Mm. right and when you actually care about your partner you understand okay these things are all the things that they don't like and these are all the things that he knows that i don't like or vice versa then you can actually start to complement each other right but when we don't do all of that we don't take the time to learn how to talk to each other i don't take the time to learn what bothers you what get what triggers you and vice versa, and then you sit here and you hold on to something that I that really got under your skin for three weeks, but you don't want to feel like you're complaining too much. It's just going to be a, a bigger complaint at the end of the day and a bigger fight that's going to be a, a war. So we're talking about conflict resolution, basically. Yep. Like, yeah, if one partner is not good at conflict conflict resolution, I don't know why I'm stuttering. Because you want res- to be Webster. Clam slick. <laughs> <laughs> He added another syllable in in letter. He said, "Klalalapin." Klalalapin. I take on this show. You started uh, it. No, but I'm honest. I'm it. I'm giving you your. Sleep. I like how you you just be quiet. No, I'm just I'm yeah. quiet. I'm I'm letting you rock. Yeah, she did. I'm tr- she, I'm tr- I'm letting you rock. Too much or too many's, and then I'd be like, <laughs> and then I let it go. I'm me and her. See. You picking your battles. I, I'm picking my battles. Okay. Mm-hmm. Love that. Uh, you know what it is. I think we're talking about conflict resolution and like if one partner is better at it than the other, then could the other uh, partner That's that's the question. Could the other yeah. partner that's not as good as conflict with the conflict resolution start to resent that that partner always has their shit together and always knows how to always knows how to just compartmentalize things and say, This is what we should do, this is a solution. So I yeah. feel like in relationships, sometimes your partner isn't looking for a solution. They're just looking to just dump stuff out and dump stuff out. And I have to say, yo, this is what we should do, but you just want to keep going, 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 and it's just going to keep going. So this is what we should do. This is the solution. 